how to create an end screen image for your videos using Adobe Illustrator. Hi, it's Peter here from Hidden Online Living, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create an end screen for your videos using Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so I'm currently using Adobe version CS6 to create this end screen image, but you can use any version that you want, any version that you currently have. If you have Adobe Illustrator, you can work the same way. Okay, so we are going to open a new file that we are going to use to create this end screen image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to name it. And what I'm going to do is just leave the artboards as it is and leave the size of custom. And what I'm going to do is make sure to change the orientation to landscape and make sure the unit is in pixels. And then I'm going to change the width and height to 1280 by 720 pixels because this is the standard for the YouTube thumbnails. So when I'm done with that, you leave everything else there as it is and just click OK. So this is going to open up a whole new canvas that we can use to get started. So on our blank canvas, the first thing that we are going to do is we are actually going to fill in the background. So when we have the, we look just over here at the layers tab. Oh, I'm just going to just rename this, just double click on it. I'm just going to type in name of the layer and hit enter. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're actually just going to zoom out on the image a little bit so we can see what we're going to add the fill for the background. So you can either hold the Z key on the keyboard and you can you can select an area and it will actually zoom in on that. Or alternatively you can zoom out, you can hold the control key on the keyboard and use the plus and minus keys beside the number of keys at the top of the keyboard to zoom in and out. Or alternatively alternatively, which is quicker, if you hold down the alt key on the keyboard and use the mouse wheel on your mouse and just move it up and down and you'll be able to zoom in exactly to where you want it to be just makes it a lot easier also if you want to move the canvas around on the screen if you click and hold the space bar you will actually get this hand icon that will come up and you can click and drag the, the canvas around so it's easier to reposition it to where you need it to be so you can see exactly what you need to do Alright, so the next thing what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just go over here and where it says create a new layer. I'm just going to create a new layer and just place a new layer on top for just for the time being. So again, I'm going to click back on to the background layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the toolbar and where it says the rectangle tool, I'm just going to click it and it's going to allow me to create a rectangle. So I want to make the, the fill of the rectangle black. So what I'm actually going to do is here. Here you have the fill color and you have the stroke color. So a quick way around that is to flip the colors. So I'm just going to flip that. And again, I can select the stroke color. I'm just going to delete it and just select the fill color. So I'm going to come back and I'm just going to click and drag a rectangle box just over the canvas. And there you go. It's going to fill it completely black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to the layers palette here and beside the little eye icon this toggles the visibility so I can toggle it on and off but what I want to do is click uh, the wee blank area beside, this, beside it. It's going to lock the layer. Okay so the next plan of action is what I actually want to do is I'm just going to come back over here and click on the, the new layer and the goal is here is I want to section off a, an entire area here on the canvas so that uh, what I'm actually going to do is when I'm editing my videos that I can shrink the video size and I can actually place it within the certain segment of the window and because what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a load of call to actions like like uh, like the channel sub subscribe share and so forth and even with links to my website and different elements on the side while the video is still playing it just gives more description it adds more detail towards the end screen plus it gives like I said a direct call to action so that uh, visitors on the video know exactly what to do so again what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to rename this layout just video window 
press enter and now what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to fill this in on, as a different colour I'm going to choose a white whitish colour and again with the rectangle tool select it I'm literally just going to draw another box just in this window here and I'm just going to place it here so this will tell me exactly where my window is going to be so I can place my video so I can place it within this vicinity here okay so with that done what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to lock that layer also and I'm going to create another new layer and I'm going to create this call to action icons Again, I'm going to press enter. Okay, so now I'm going to start by creating the icons. I want to create a row of icons along here, uh, such as like and have a subscribe uh, button icon uh, with the YouTube symbol on it. And again, with share and leave a comment. All right, so the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do the like button. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get uh, to come over here to our it says the rectangle tool. What I want you to do is click and hold on the left mouse button and it will open up a separate uh, selection of shapes that you can use. So what I want you to do is select the rounded rectangle tool. So once you highlight it you can let go of the mouse button and it will select it. Right so to make it easier I'm actually just going to use part of the canvas over here. Just leave and just draw the images just slightly bigger and I can resize them as I go on. So I'm going to hold the shift button and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and create like a rounded shape box with rounded edges as can be seen here. Now I only just want to create basic simple shapes. I don't want to overthink it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the shape again uh, I'm going to click and I'm just going to not hold the shift button, but I'm just going to click and just drag around. You can see how it changes size. So I literally just want to keep a simple type of image. Yeah, that's it, that will do. And you can either come over back over and click the black arrow key, the selection tool, or you can click V on the keyboard. That will select it. And literally all I want to do is I'm going to click, I'm going to drag, and what it's going to do is it'll automatically snap here to the side. Let me zoom in. You can see here it snaps in line with this here image. So I can actually have everything together. So the next thing what I want to actually do is I'm going to highlight the both of them. And I'm going to come over here to the tool panel I have on the side here. And if you can't find this tool panel, you can literally go up to where it says window and it'll give you a list of all the different options and you should find pathfinder here you click on that and then it'll actually it should display on the screen so again you have different tabs here changing the orientation and alignment perspectives but all I want is the pathfinder tool so when I go back and I highlight both images you have different options here unite minus front, intersect, exclude so like I can hit exclude and what it will do is it will cut pieces out now if I hit ctrl z it will undo that but what I want to do is unite the two of them so I go to this one here so I click on that and what it does is it combines them and merges them together so it's all one image now so with that now done what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to add a bit more to the image just to make it look a bit more authentic so I'm going to go back over here to the rounded rectangle tool again, click on it, and again what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to create another a, a custom style image, again because I'm going to be using this. So I'm just going to leave it like that there, again hit, hit V on the keyboard, so I'm going to click and drag, and again what I'm going to do is try and snap it, there we can. So at least I have it somewhat in line. And all I'm going to do 
with this here is I'm going to make multiple copies of this. So I'm going to click and I'm going to press down and hold the Alt key. And I'm going to hold Shift and I'm going to drag it down. Again, there it makes a duplicate of that item. And all I want to do then is using the arrow keys on the keyboard, I'm literally just going to drag it in slightly. I'm going to do the same thing again. And then the Alt key, click and drag, and then hold Shift to drag it down in proportion. And again, use the arrow key and drag it down. And again, I can keep doing that if I want. It's totally up to you at the end of the day. If you want to do it like that way. Actually, increase the size of this. Again. you're going to do is I'm just going to create another symbol what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this and I'm actually going to turn this into a stroke and I'm actually going to remove a segment of this here just to have it in mind so while that's a stroke I'm just going to make it slightly bigger so I'm just going to come up here onto the top of the toolbar and it should say stroke and you can change the weight of the stroke so I'm going to make it I'll make a four point just to cut a good bit out of it and what I want to do next is I want to create to convert this stroke to a fill image so I want to come up to where it says object up the top I'm going to go down to where it says path and you're going to click on outline stroke so that's converted it now to a fill. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do here is I'm actually going to just actually I think I'll move these up just slightly. Yeah, so it doesn't look no near out of place. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. Okay, so again I'll move this one up as well to kind of match that. So with these here selected, I'm just going to select these original images and again I'm going to use the merge button. Click on it, merge them all together. And then with this one here, I'm going to select that and holding in shift, select the other option. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to click on exclude. So then when that is there, it's actually going to cut that bit out. What I want to do is delete these next segments. So the next thing to do is go to click up an object. And select on group and then it'll ungrip all these objects so you can highlight them all and just click delete okay so with the other image that we copied earlier on all I'm doing is just going to hold down control shift and press V on the keyboard and again that's actually going to paste it in place so all I want to do is just move that up and all you're just going to do is just move it in place and just space it out so you have it all as a, a it, lo it looks more authentic looking so again you're just going to highlight the two of these and all I'm going to do is you can kind of, you can go up to the where it says object and group or you can just hit control and G on the keyboard again so this here now they're a grouped image so it's all together again I could have made I could have just got a custom image off the internet but you want it to be authentic and you want it to be original so it's if you can create your own by all means do so Okay, so with that done, I'm actually just going to zoom out. So again, just hold control, uh, Alt on the keyboard, and you can zoom out. Hold the space bar down to move the canvas around. I'm literally just going to click the like button, and then I'm literally just going to move it over here. Again, if you want to resize it proportionally without it actually being skewed, hold in the Shift key and click on any of the points and drag it out, and that will resize it correctly and keep the correct proportions. Okay, so put that there in place. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually just going to get a bit of text. I'm going to make sure that it's white. I'm just going to click. Again, I'm just going to make sure that it's the point size that I can actually read. And just have to change the color to white. And I can change the text. What I can do, a quick way to do that, is just to highlight the text in 
box here and once it's highlighted literally just press down or up and it will change the different types of text to make it easier so again we're just going to type in I'm actually going to put on the caps lock button to make it all, it's all in caps okay so with that selected I'll go back and again I can change the text to whatever font I like Kind of like that one now. Yeah, so with that there, I'll select this. I'm actually just going to put it pretty much the side there. I might just change the size of it just slightly, maybe down to about 30. So that way it's not taking up too much space. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. Again, I just want it, everything in this is just to be simple. I just want, for now, I just want it a simple backdrop that's easy to put together. Okay, so I'm going to work on the next part now. I'm going to create a share icon with some share text similar to this here. So actually what I'm going to do just to make things simpler and quicker, just click and highlight the text because I'll be using the same font. Hold in the Alt key, click and drag, and hold in the Shift key to keep it in line. There you go. So then in this case, then just double click it and it'll highlight everything and just type in share. And then press escape to select it okay so what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to draw a, an arrow so what I'm actually going to do is here is I'm going to click up here with the pen tool and I'm actually going to this time I'm going to make it a stroke and I'm going to click up here where it says stroke it's going to be stroke weight so I'm going to have it at least three to four point I'll leave it at four point then there'll be an option here where it'll say uniform beside it and it'll give you a breakdown of different um, line sizes and graphics. So I'm going to click one that looks pointy. So I'm just going to literally click on that. And literally all I'm going to do is click, create an anchor point, create and click again, create another anchor point. And what the when you when you've clicked the second anchor point, you don't let go of the mouse mouse button. You keep, keep hold of it, and you just click and drag, and you see two bezier handles appear, and then you can curve the line. So when you get it to how you like it, you can let it go, and there you go. It'll create your line for you. So you're just going to click on the stroke again. Again, I'm just going to increase the weight size of that. Okay, so it didn't create it how I liked. So what I can actually do there is I can just transform it. So we go up to object, click on transform, and you can click on where it says reflect. And you get an option to, uh, to change it how you want. So I want to just change it just vertical. There you go. So literally all I have to do is just come down to the corner here to make it easier. And where the it shows two arrows uh, bend on either side, click and hold shift, and drag it up, and there you go. It'll actually move it around. So I can literally just click and alternate the size of the, the arrow. Again, I can increase the weight of it if I want. And what I can even do is I can come up and select the direct selection tool or press A on the keyboard. It'll be the white arrow on the top, uh, the second arrow then on the toolbar. And you can click over here and I can click the top arrow uh, anchor point and click and I can drag it so I can definitely change it around a lot easier. I have more control over it. So you can just play around with it until you get something that you actually like. Okay, so with that, just press uh, B again on the keyboard. 
Here, I'm just going to show up another. Yeah, it's a bit better. And I can bring that up. So the next thing to do is I'm going to come back over here to the rounded rectangle tool, but I'm going to press and hold it again and select the rectangle tool again. So this time I'm actually going to draw a square. So I'm going to hold in the shift key and I'm going to draw a square. Okay, so I'm just going to fill that in. Now what I'm actually going to do is here, I'm just going to flip it 45 degrees. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I want to delete main point here because I want to make a triangle so the quickest way to do that is come over here to the pen tool click and hold on it and like the other tools it will give you added options you want to uh, come down here where it says delete angle point tool so you select that and then all you need to do is literally come over here and select one of these points that you want to delete click on it and there you go so I'll just go back onto that so that will actually select that Okay, so what I want to do is resize that, move it down a little more, and even just to make it easier, just to view, uh, zoom in. And what I'm going to do is click, and I'm going to put it up here beside the, the stroke that I done earlier on. So I might just increase the size of that a little bit. Yeah, it's a lot better. Now I'm going to convert that like I did before to a, a fill. So go to object, go to path, and outline stroke. Okay, so I'm going to select the two of them again, come down to the Pathfinder tool, and click Unite. There we go. So I'm just going to click it and put it over here. I can actually just resize it a little bit. Yeah, it's a bit better. Okay, so I'm just going to click and drag. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to go and create the subscribe button next. So again, I'm going to come over to the rectangle tool, and we're going to do use the, the rounded rectangle tool again. So we'll highlight that, and what we're going to do is we are going to create our button. That should be about there. Okay. So I'm actually going to change the color of this to red because obviously it's going to symbolize YouTube the YouTube button actually I'll make that a wee bit darker because it is very very bright a bit more subtle right there actually I'll make it a wee bit darker yeah that's better Okay, and what I'm actually going to do is I'll put a subtle stroke on it. Just to make it stand out a bit more. Yeah. Let me just bring the weight of that down. Yeah, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'll resize that. Yeah, and hold the shift key when you're selecting any of the anchor points and keep it held and it will scale it down proportionally ok so I'm gonna, literally what I'm going to do is hold in the ALT key when I click the text because I'm going to reuse this click and drag ok so I've made a copy of the text but as you can be seen it's, it's hiding behind the image so we want to bring it forward so we can do this one or two ways we can either come up to the object go to arrange and I'll say bring to front or what we can actually do is just move this out of the way select the text again what we can or what we can do is we can hold control shift and hit the right bracket key and that'll bring it forward okay so what I'm going to do is like before I'm just going to rename this Select and hit the uh, escape key to deselect it. Okay, and we're going to use a similar tactic as we did before with the rectangle tool. I'm going to create a square and just press the V key. 
what we're going to do is hold the shift key down when you're near when you're near one of the anchor points and move it up 45 degrees and then what you're going to do is you're going to guess the anchor tool again or another alternative what you can actually do is sometimes what I find even works you can create another rectangle and just draw another box but it, it makes sure that it snaps together with the center point the two, uh, two anchor points on the, the square that you've already edited I like the two of them and all you're going to do is click on minus front there you go so that will completely get rid of that, that works as well I'm just going to change the size of this just a little bit and I'm just going to resize that So what I'm actually going to do now with this, I'm actually going to group this, highlight the whole lot, and hit Control and G. There you go, so that's grouped. So then literally all I'm going to do the next one is I'm just going to put the text just for leaving so people can leave a comment. So again, I'm just going to highlight this text, I'm just going to drag it over. Just gonna edit the text in. So I can just highlight that and I can come up and I can come up to the paragraph section and center align it. I'll just resize that. Leave it right there. And I'll center it over here. And I'll just move these up a little bit. Again, just using the arrow key just to move them up in increments, it's easier to do it that way once you select everything. Alright, so with all that done, make sure to save it. Also, yeah, make sure to regularly save your files when you're using any Adobe products because as long as I've been using it, because I've been using Illustrator a long time, it can crash quite regularly. So get in the habit of making sure that you save, it's similar to any type of program, just get into the habit of saving regularly just in case you lose anything that you're doing, you don't want to backtrack, you can spend ages and doing something, you don't want to have to start all over again. Okay, so I'm just going to add in the last piece of text. This point here in the video is going to be in this white section here, but this editor, this part section here, is literally going to be where I'm going to place the cards on my YouTube video so that when the, the end screen does come in your, your extra videos that I have on my channel that will be displayed to play next should show up here so just it, it gives room for that so at least you can clearly see there's a distinct call to action in all of these sections and it gives people then obviously the, the option to, to click on to another video and so forth so I'll get into it so literally all I'm going to do is just add in the text that I'm using just to promote the product that I'm promoting in the videos. Okay, so I'm just going to start by typing in the text for the last piece here. Yep. Actually, I'm just going to copy the text that I'm here using. Just click and drag that down here. Use the same font to keep everything consistent
you say is that? this extra bit in. If you just copy and dip it and paste. Okay, so I've just copied the link from my actual website landing page. So I'm just gonna pop it in here. And again I'm actually gonna make this bigger. That is more distinctive. Actually, I think I will change the font on this here so that it's not as it's easier to read. Okay, so that's a fairly simple end screen. Again, I just wanted to keep the end screen as simple as possible. Again, I, I probably will change this up some point in the future, but for now I just want to get uh, something simple just up and running. Just add to the end of the video, just so it looks a bit more professional. So the next thing I'm going to do now is just add it to the end of this video. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to go and unlock both of the layers. I'm just going to select everything. And what I'm actually going to do is hold Control, Shift and press 0. And what it does is it outlines all the text. So it makes it into a, a fill image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this out as an image now just so I can use it in my video. So what I'm actually going to do before I export, I am going to select Object. And I'm going to come all the way down to where it says Artboards. And I'm going to click on where it says Fit the Selected Area. So this is going to literally just create a whole box just around this whole area. So what I'm actually going to do then is I'm going to click on File. And I'm going to click on Export. So it already has my name, Video End Screen. So I'm going to make sure that I save it as a JPEG image or I can save it as a PNG whichever I'm just in this case I'm actually going to just test this out just to see how well it looks first and foremost so I'm just going to save it as a JPEG 
I'm going to make sure where it says use artboards, click on the checkbox. Make sure that I have it in the folder that I want to find where it is and click save. And it'll come up with an option here so make sure that it's the highest quality. And I'm going to click on save image. Also another way of doing this just for peace of mind you can just come up here and click file save for web and it'll open up a different window and give you a load of different higher end options, more detailed options and again because this is going to be streaming on YouTube you want it to be the highest quality so I'm not just going to bump that up to 100% and again it's going to keep your dimensions and the whole lot. Now we probably will increase the, the file size of this slightly yeah well to be 150k but again you know it's going to be a decent enough image quality so once that's done you're just going to click on save and just click save and that's it saved now, so the nice thing to do is just, just put it into the, the video itself. Okay, so there you have it. That's the end screen, and I've resized the video that it'll play on that uh, white box so that it can fit in, so at least it's not contradicting everything else that's on the screen. So at least I can get the message out there. I do apologize for the length of this video, but I wanted to keep it as beginner friendly as possible so that anyone that's starting out that really doesn't know what to be doing at least they can follow along fairly simply so hopefully you found the content in this video to be useful and hopefully that you may find some value from it and if you know of anyone else that may benefit from this content make sure to like and share the video also subscribe to the channel and if you do have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below. Also, if you would like to follow the same simple step-by-step -step blueprint that I use to help create my own online business, then be sure to click the first link in the description and the pinned comment to find out more. And as always, thanks for watching.